Today's topic is writing leads for nonfiction. If you've got five minutes, I've got five tips for you to perhaps improve your ability to write leads for nonfiction. You know, 30 years ago, I started my career as a writer, writing nonfiction. And for many years, that's really all I ever wrote. And certainly that's all I ever published. I always wrote a bit of fiction on the side. But my books, articles, uh, were all nonfiction. I remember the first time I actually saw my name in print. It was a feature story in the weekend newspapers magazine spread that they had. It was really quite exciting. It was, an, uh, it was a topic I was very passionate about and it was the first time that I had written a feature article. Well, how did I learn to write that feature article? When it came to my nonfiction, I had a passion for writing, but I also had a passion for the topic that I was writing about. And I knew that I needed to learn as much as I could about writing properly. And one of the things I had to learn was how to actually format and construct an article, but I also had to learn how to write leads. And over the years, I've had to write leads for magazine articles, but also for books and for book chapters. So when you think about the concept of writing leads for nonfiction, it's not just about writing magazine articles. It can be for your book, your book chapters, your blog pieces, anything that you're writing that you think might be published, you're gonna to have to write a lead. Well, what exactly is a lead? Well, it sound, it's exactly what it sounds like. It leads off your article or your chapter. These days, many people call it your hook, but let's use it properly. It really leads things off, but its purpose is to hook your reader, to draw them in, to lure them in, to make them want to read the rest of your article. So that lead has to be really good. And there are a number of different approaches that you can take. You can write anything you want as a lead, but there are some solid fundamental tips that will help you figure out the kind of lead you want. Number one, you could present a startling fact. Now that fact has to be relevant and it has to be accurate. And it has to be something that you think will draw the reader into the rest of your story. It could be a statistic or it could be something that kind of goes against widely held beliefs. These are kinds of startling things that make people sit up and take notice. Here's an example of one of those leads. 60% of people can't get through a single conversation without lying at least once. Now, isn't that the kind of lead that might draw you into a story about lying? Tip number two, you could pose a question. Obviously, the question has to be relevant. It also has to be fairly simple, and it should be a question that the reader can be drawn into personally. Here's an example. If you had to pick a month when you believe people lie most, what month would you choose? A lead like that engages the reader and draws them in and gets them to think about it. By the way, in case you're wondering what the answer to the question is, it's January. Number three, you could quote an expert. Now you have to be careful about this because you have to make sure that is very relevant and part of your story. But you also have to think about the credibility of the individual that you choose to quote. Sometimes people will use quotes from famous people from years ago. That can be useful. It depends on what the article's about. But quite often, it's better to have a, an up-to-date kind of quote for somebody who knows something about the subject matter. We're talking about nonfiction here, remember. Here's an example of a lead that uses a quote. Telling the truth and giving up all those white lies is good for your health, at least according to Notre Dame University psychology professor, Dr. Anita Kelly. So now that you've set your article off and you've drawn your reader in to wanting to know more about lying, you can carry on. Tip number four is you can present an anecdote. This is a short story. This is something that draws the reader in, unfolds slowly and allows the reader to develop a picture of what you're talking about. Here's an example of an anecdotal lead. Susan Thompson thought she could get away with it. It was only a small lie. No one will ever find out, she told herself. No one would ever believe that I could tell a lie anyway. That's how it started. Now, don't you want to know what happened to Susan 
and why she lied and what she lied about and why she thought people weren't going to find out about it. Tip number five, use an analogy. Obviously it has to be relevant, but it also has to be relatable to your specific audience, which is one of the reasons why in nonfiction we look more closely at who our audience is when we're writing. Let me give you an example. A lie is a kind of a bomb. It's harmless until it's found out, and then there's an explosion you're often not ready for. Now you'd be ready to read that article about lying, wouldn't you? There are other kinds of leads, but most of them are variations on these five themes. So these tips about writing your lead will help you to figure out what's best going to draw your reader in. So now I've got five suggestions for how I might start an article about lying. Maybe I should actually write it now. And maybe you've got an article to finish writing as well. Talk to you next time. Subscribe to Write, Fix, Repeat. And maybe I can help you improve your writing knowledge and skills five tips at a time.